Now here, we are done, but not quite done. We are done with uh, installing Anaconda, and you are very eager to start. And you look at your, you know, your bar, your 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 um, taskbar here. You see nothing, right? So what are you going to do? Well, you click on the Windows, and you find that you have this Anaconda recently added, right? Okay. Uh, if not, you just go to A. You should find Anaconda, right? So Anaconda 64-bit. Okay. So click on this now. Here's my tip. You might want to um, click on, on, if you left click, you will start that, but don't left click just yet. What you should do immediately is to right click on Jupyter Notebook, all right, and go to more and say pin to taskbar, pin to taskbar. And what this does is that it is going to pin to taskbar here, all right, so this will be our Jupyter Notebook. We like that because it's very convenient. So I'm just giving you this tip so that you don't have to always click Windows Start and look for Anaconda, then click on it. And it's just, you know, quite a chore, right? And of course, we do the same for Spider. And because Spider runs uh, Anaconda within itself, it sort of controls, managers, and, and triggers Python as a needed, depending on our editorial kind of uh, thinking direction. Uh, so we don't have to really worry and run Python explicitly, so we don't have to worry about that. Same thing goes for Jupyter. It will activate and trigger Python interpreter automatically, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so these two are done. Now, just for the sake of seeing it and confirming that you have installed the right software, just click on Anaconda for a while. And uh, you see that there's a lot of screen flickers because it's trying to set up a temporary web server. Uh, in order to control and handhold uh, some of these Python, Pythonic kind of uh, configurations. So I'm done. Uh, actually, it turns out the screen went to my other display. So let me just try to uh, shrink it down here. Okay. Mm, okay. So uh, it's got command clock prompt to uh, explicitly control Anaconda. Remember, Anaconda is more like a managerial toolbox right it doesn't provide the software it doesn't run python per se uh, but it's got quite fascinating suite of uh, uh, tools such as called command prompt uh, data law and if you have further i mean if down the line there are further uh, uh, setups uh, we will see later versions of anaconda coming in oh we have ibm watson studio i didn't see this before so the latest version has it uh, jupyter lab which is different from jupyter notebook we're going to run jupyter notebook or uh, perhaps later in, in uh, subsequent sessions, but uh, we're not going to touch this. So we do have Spider, right? That's the one we run. And we can, of course, always click on Launch to launch that particular uh, software within this suite of softwares. All right, so again, the concept needs to be clear. Think of Anaconda as a toolbox that contains hammer, spanner, screwdrivers, and these are the tools. The software are the tools. So Spider is a tool. Um, um, Orange 3 is a tool, BlueViz is a tool, uh, PyCharm, you might have heard, is also another IDE. Remember IDE? Integrated Development Environment. So it helps us to uh, more productively write software uh, faster with higher quality, means less bugs, less error, and then we can just run it first time. And at least that's the ideal. And then we have RStudio, very well-known um, data analytics tool that you might like to also uh, sort of uh, run in order to practice your R programming. So that's about it, right? And uh, let's just pull it away. Next, another software that we will need is SQL Lite. So let's do that. So SQL Lite, uh, just search for it. It is www.sqlite.org. And of course, we could also go to the download page. So we click on download. All right. And uh, we will, let's see. I'm doing this fresh. So I'm looking for Windows version. Of course, again, if yours is on Mac, you look for Mac uh, download links, the zip file. And if yours is Linux, same thing, right? So for Windows here, again, we are faced with the choice of 32-bit and 64-bit. It is a good idea to always stick to the same uh, bit type, whether it's 32-bit 
or 64-bit. So since we have downloaded the 64-bit Anaconda, and until, right, uh, in advanced programming, we hit certain problematic parts, we will try to always download the 64-bit versions. So this will be what uh, we will do. All right, so click on it, save it, and then um, run it. Ah, sorry. So this is just uh, pre-compiled binaries. Universal Windows Black Platform um, from previous expression. So let me see. I need to run the SQL Light Studio. Sorry, I should do that. So we have downloaded the SQL Light, but we also need the Studio. So SQL Light and SQL Light Studio. The relationship is a bit like Spider and uh, Python, right? So Python we can download explicitly, but it is itself like a Ferrari engine without the Ferrari casing, right? So so it's very very powerful, but you know you can't can't do it in a fanciful way. So same thing here, we have downloaded SQL Lite, uh, but that is just little two two files that basically will be the engine for uh, giving us SQL Lite access. What we need is a, a nicer dressing a casing so that is called sql studio and again we like to download and <laughs> donate if you want so i'm going to just you know going to have them out a bit to call out for donation so save it and now we have a zip file right so we have this zip file now sql light studio is interesting if you go inside it's got a the, the zip file you just got you're going to see this this top level uh, folder that holds all the rest of the SQL Studio software, okay? And the software is none other than SQL Lite Studio. So don't run it off here. I'm just showing you uh, what is inside the zip content. So what you want to do, as well as in Mac or Linux, you want to Control C, copy it, all right, and uh, drop it into D colon. Uh, let me see D colon. Uh, program data right. so so this was where we install our anaconda 3 and i'm just going to control v drop it off here and that's called installation and it's kind of a manual stitching way right so we uh, copy the whole folder here and of course we are supposed to run sql studio this one not the cli cli is the client that you run with the command prompt not very interesting it's black and white screen and all that so uh, we don't want to always run Explorer, navigate all the way here to run. So what we do is right click on the studio and say pin to taskbar. See this, right? If yours is on another position, go ahead and click that. So what that does is pin the SQL Studio icon here. So it's very convenient, right? One click and we can run it. Okay, so we will do that and see. And when we run this, aha, We've got our SQL Studio here, right? So uh, it, it's got everything, and uh, we can issue SQL commands, and we can open up SQL files. Uh, you know that that is for another video and another lesson. But at least now we have seen uh, this Studio. What does this do? This allows us to microscopically inspect database. Right, database. Not all databases, but databases that are written in the format of SQL Lite, which is a miniaturized version of the mainstream SQL. For us to get started, for us to also get serious with storing data on very limited storage space, such as those in our mobile phones. Right. So that's just to demonstrate that we have successfully installed SQL Lite. Next, let's run our best friend for now, Spider. So we click on that. Spider 4, that's the latest version. And it's uh, just taking a little bit of time to get set up. Mm, okay, so this is uh, what we have for Spider. Yeah, okay, so let's close it. And uh, on the left screen is our programming space. Okay, so we can call it the coding space, the program space. On the right screen bottom, it's split into top and bottom. Bottom is the shell, the Python shell. Uh, the shell is like the C shell. It's 
a historical term inherited from Unix and all that. So shell just means it's like a command prompt, interpreter space. This is where if we issue a command, a equals one, two, three, then uh, Python will acknowledge it and store this one, two, three value into variable A. So if we say, what's the value in A? One, two, three. Okay, so if we say A equals to hello, now this container called A has the string hello. Well, that's just to illustrate that we are able to run Python now because that is truly from Python. Yeah, okay. Uh, and what about this program space? We could also say A equals to hello world. So that's a string, right? Not, not, there's nothing fanciful. We're just extending the string a little bit. And when we put return, nothing happens because it's like, it's more like a batch command thing, right? So we, Python will, or rather Spider, will wait for us to finish up everything before we click the triangle sign to run the program, right? Run this file. Now, it's a good idea to always immediately save as, yeah? Uh, instead of leaving it as empty, uh, untitled, we try to save as, I save it in the temp file. Um, no, all right. So name it as something meaningful to you. Uh, Hello.py, right? So I'm going to save this so that you see that there is a name here. It says it's saved into temp now hello.py. Okay. Next, what we do is we say print. Uh, a. So print means send the content of the value, send the content of uh, this variable A to the console. Console means what? Console means the output. Uh, so output means output to the interactive shell here. This is our console. It's like, again, an output screen for the Python. So the Python receives the command on, the, on one end and outputs the printouts or the text or whatever it is that you instruct. Uh, Python to print out to the console, right? So at this point, we only see cursor blinking, nothing happens. And so what we do is just click run. And we have just successfully run our first ever Python program starting from emptiness. That should give you some confidence in, in doing, uh, you know, programming to control the rocket to fire to Mars, right? Yeah. So this is uh, where we are. I hope you get a lot of confidence now that it is really very simple. A few clicks and you're done. And uh, we have just completed our first Python program. So congratulations. All right, so that's all. And see you in the next video.